This is how we make the moonshine. I think we ought to go ahead and cap it off. It's been steaming for a few minutes now. All right, she's hot. Let's all go right, with it. Slide right. him on up and on. Here you go, Brian. You need you some paste over yonder? Yeah. All right, there you go. Y'all got enough over yonder? Money, money, money. Somebody come across the bridge. Oh, 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 In Franklin County, Virginia, Josh Tickle and the Laws make their first run of the season on foot. I thought when you was behind me with a damn camera, I thought it was a law. That's why it took me so long to slow down. You were right on my heels, man. Did you make it? Did you tell anybody got away? <laughs> I just ran. <laughs> I just ran. <laughs> it's an unwritten rule for moonshiners. When you get raided, it's every man for himself. It's on me to get away. It's on my buddies to get away. Right now, I'm just going to take my time. Try to work my way back up a little bit further. Got to sit in these woods because I can't get out on the main roads or anything yet because they might be waiting for me. I don't want to get turned around here, but I think if we pick up this little trail right here, it should keep us in the direction we want to go. Stay in the woods. We'll just keep humping it until we get back to the shop. It'll take us a little bit of time, but. I think it's best to do that instead of trying to get out to the main road and catch a ride or call anybody to come and get us. A lot of times they'll get on the main roads and a straightaway and they'll park a car. If you try to cross that hardtop road, then they'll nail your butt. I just hope my buddies got away. We all stole that money, but I don't care about the money as long as nobody goes to jail. Try to get this bad baby fixed. Grab our new core. Got our new core. I think it ought to do it. What do you think? Damn, I hope it does, brother. I don't want to blow my damn self up no more. In Haywood County, North Carolina, after an explosion derailed their first attempt at building a wooden still pot, Mike and Jerry start over from scratch. We're making a still out of a charred wood barrel. Hopefully, it's going to transfer the aged flavor into a clear alcohol, which is what we're wanting. Best of both worlds. That just still amazes me, man. Keep that for a souvenir. <laughs> we're trying to build another core. What happened last time, some gun like to blow it up and blow my damn head off. I'm going to solder it from the inside. <laughs> damn! Oh, God! <laughs> barrel blowed up with alcohol in it. There was alcohol vapor in this barrel. You can't put fire to a barrel that's got alcohol vapors in it. Putting some water in this barrel is trying to get all the alcohol vapors out to where we can at least put a fire to it without blowing ourselves up. I tell you what, man, I'm a little damn gun shy of this barrel. That's got to help it some. Oh, yeah. We'll throw some fire to it and see what happens. So we got to take down precautions. I ain't fixing to get my ice burned up again. Lay it to it, Jerry. Let's see what happens here. We're going to put a fire in there just to see if it's going to burn. You got me. No flames. That's a good thing. It means we are ready to put this core in and solder it up. Let's get something accomplished. You know, me and Jerry, we done had a tough start to our season. We lost a lot of liquor. We're broke, and uh, we ain't got nothing started yet. We'll see how she's going to fit up there. Oh, yes. You know, this deal should have been done by now. I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. We've got to get this thing in the woods and get some liquor making. Pulling down her nice and tight, ain't it? Ain't it. The bottom side done, we'll be ready to roll to the woods. You know, this barrel we're using, it's gonna be both our mash barrel and our steel pot. We gotta make sure we got a way to access and clean this thing out and get our materials into this barrel. So we're gonna cut about a four-inch hole in the top of it. 
There we go. This hole right here is actually gonna be our cap where our alcohol's gonna condense and work over to our condenser. Also, it's gonna serve as our port to get our ingredients in, get it stirred up, because we got a mash in inside this barrel. Probably the smallest damn cap in history, son. Got this cap built, it fits like a glove. I'll be surprised if we even had to put any paste around it. It's one hell of a unique cap, ain't it? Damn right. It'll work. Now that we've got our steel built, all me and Jerry's got to do is figure out how in the hell we're going to put a fire under this damn thing without burning the wood up and make damn sure we don't blow ourselves up no more. We got it, we got it ready to heat. Now we just need a way to heat it. Now in the last two or three hours, nobody at all. Is there any way you can check to see if the feds brought anybody in for me? Give me a call back. You know, we got connections all over the county. First thing I did was make a couple phone calls, try to find out what's going on. Holler back at me, all right? Didn't bring anybody in up at the county jail. You know, I tried to call Josh, tried to call Tickle. I don't have Brian's number, no answer. Kenny and I, we made it back to the shop. But Tickle, Josh, Brian, you know, I'm really concerned about them. I hope the feds ain't got them. It's obvious that something went wrong, you know. We don't know what. It's time to take a drink. My nerves are to all the pieces. Did a hunter find it? Did a neighbor walk out on the property and spot us? We really don't know what happened to us today, but uh, I'm pretty confident that they didn't ID in of us. It had me. It already kicked the doors in. Well, you're the first one spotted them. I heard you well, heard somebody's it. coming across the bridge. I had the feeling we got out of the truck, what did I tell you? I said, you know, I got a bad feeling. Damn on my man. man. They may run him to death, ain't it? Man, what the hell? God. Jesus. That is good to see you. Took you took long enough, didn't you, dude? I, well, you know, I had to find my way back, the man. Me, man. Hey, look at that. <laughs> look at that. What are you talking about? When I looked up and these guys was hollering, freeze, first thing that went through my mind was, I ain't going back to jail. You got a shot of liquor around here, <laughs> sir? I need one of them. We've been talking to Tickle for the past couple years. We've been uh, working together. We've been drilling in his head how to get away, what to do if you get raided. Tickle, you got away. Evidently, the stuff that we put in his head, he listened and he listened real well. I know you was on sort of the outside, but Josh and Brian was, was in that middle, back right behind home. me, right in that hole. Yes, yeah, they was home. home. They, they was, was tied home. up, and that guy that ran by me, he was he was focused. He done zoomed in on them. Didn't even look over our way, didn't did he? He didn't even, even turn well, towards us. All I can say is if one of them did get gut, uh, first run in the darn season, bail money ain't gonna be easy to come by. We got a little uh, little project we're working on here. Me and Mike's gonna build a rocket elbow. So basically we're needing some four by four square tubing. And then on our legs, we'll find some inch and a half, inch and a quarter. So what we'd like to do is maybe drop some like three inch circles here, maybe some four inch circles on the bottom. We just weld on to keep it from sinking up in the mud. Yeah, we can do it. Do you use that plasma cutter? Is it mm -hmm. still burning? Mm -hmm. You know, if we use the normal propane burner on a wooden barrel, I think we just catch fire and burn. Rocket elbow, what it's gonna do is it's gonna be able to heat this core from the inside out. A rocket stove burns wood at extremely high temperatures with near total combustion and almost no smoke. The secret to its efficiency lies in its elbow design, which draws a large volume of oxygenated fresh air through its intake tube and into direct contact with the burning fuel. As heat from the fire rises into the heat pipe, a strong upward draft is created causing more air to be pulled into the intake pipe. Its name comes from the rocket sound caused by the air quickly rushing through the intake tube and stoking the flames. You know, the, this design we're using, this rocket elbow, basically it just works on old technology, and most people call it the chimney effect, so everybody knows that heat rises. So if you get a fire built, and you channel it one direction, it has nowhere else to go but up, it actually creates a vacuum. Well, that vacuum is gonna actually add oxygen to a fire and make it hotter. So there we go, there's our burner. Our wood feed here, well, this is gonna be our fresh air income. Our actual flame and our heat will take place right here. It'll travel through the tube and then up through the flue. This kind of reminds me a lot of our column steel. You know, it's something that's never been done before, at least not that we know of. Perfect. I think we're about ready to set her on the legs, ain't we? All right. You know, I'm down well hoping this works. I know it's gonna get hot. It's gonna burn, but I'm worried we're gonna burn something down. There's so much hard to burn hotter than a nanny goat in a pepper patch picking six rows at a time. 
That's pretty damn hot, son. The next step, all we gotta do is set this thing up on the stand, mash it in, we're done. We're ready for the season. Ow!